talked last time also about how do you hold your hands, okay? When you're wrapped and taped and you have something covering them, turning your hands over stuff like this, you know, can make sense. The problem is if you're used to doing that and you're not wrapped and taped, you don't have support, okay? The chance of breaking your hands now on people's head goes way up. And I'm speaking from experience. You can see all the busted bones in the back of my hands. I was a slow learner and I busted my hands more than twice on people's heads, punching them. And even somebody like Mike Tyson broke his hand on Mitch Green in a street fight, turning it over. Okay? So if we're going to practice for something besides gloved, you know, sports sparring, and make no mistake, even though there's, you know, the rules are different in MMA, that is a sport. They do all kinds of things that are going to get you in big trouble on the street. And there's all kinds of things that you can do to forestall some of the things that they do, okay, that aren't legal, that you can do on the street. So you have to think about that. Where are the gaps in your program? And when you look at things, wrestling, wrestling helped me out several times this week, big gaps there as well. BJJ. It's a sport. It's a ground grappling sport. Okay, if you're gonna try to use it for self-defense on the street, good luck with that. It wasn't designed for that. It's basically the grappling that came from judo. Okay, nothing wrong with it. It's great stuff. I've done it myself. I had my boys do it. I've got my grandkids doing it. I'm building a base for them. Okay, but know the limitations of what you're studying. Okay, if you're studying sports stuff, and that includes a wide range of things that we call martial arts in the modern world, know what the limitations are. Know what's actually gonna work or not. I'll do some videos on how to stay safe on the street, which are a lot different than fighting, because fighting's not safe, I don't care when, where, how. Um, but that's not for right now. So how am I gonna hold my hands? We talked before, if you look at the old guys, you know, you look at, at Jeffries, you look at O'Sullivan, you look at, or John L. Sullivan, excuse me, not O'Sullivan, although it might've been O'Sullivan at one time, knowing the Irish, okay, um, Jack Johnson, and you see them holding their hands in a different way, okay? They're holding their hands like this because when they turn it over, they're gonna turn it over like this, okay? You're gonna turn it over like this because as you turn your hand this way and you're hitting something round and hard that's moving, the possibility of hitting it off to this side is really high, okay? And even if you don't, it's easy to break your hand. Somebody ducks down and you hit the forehead and stuff like that, really easy to break your hands, especially if you're hitting hard, okay? If it's round and you're hitting vertical like this, far more support from your hand. You're not getting all these little bones isolated out on part of a round head, okay? So the other thing that they would do is they would punch like this. See how my fist stays vertical, okay? Another reason, I'm gonna punch this and I'm thinking that by the time it gets here, it's gonna be vertical. And my opponent, being uncooperative, ducks down in and I catch him like this. Break your hand just like that. Again, when that happens, it breaks just like that. And if you think you're gonna be hitting somebody with that hand and tucking through the pain again, yeah, do it and try it. Because those bones start moving like this when you hit somebody and all of a sudden that right hand punch that might've been your best punch is not a punch anymore. You, can't, you won't hit him hard. Those bones start grinding against each other. Again, I'm speaking from personal experience here. This is not theory. I know this to be a fact because I've done it, okay? And all of a sudden now, I don't have my, I don't have my right hand again. And recognizing that guys like, you know, Dempsey and Jeffries and Sullivan and Jack Johnson and those guys had enormously stronger hands than 99% of modern certainly first world people, because they grew up working with their hands their entire life. It's like your grandfather, or somebody who's your great grandfather, you know, you shake the guy's hand. My grandfather was a st short, stocky little Welshman, five foot six, okay? I remember shaking his hand, it felt like you were grabbing a rock, right? And he wasn't grabbing hard, he wasn't squeezing my hand, he just worked with his hands his whole life. And the bones and the tendons and everything are enormously tougher. So when you get out here, start punching at people with hand, modern hands, don't expect them to hang together when you start beating on people, okay? It's a really important thing. So then, things to practice are palm strikes, right? So instead of throwing a straight right hand, bang, palm strike, right? 
Those things work really well, okay? And the chance of breaking your hand. Same motion, okay? Same motion, but now think palm strikes. Now to the body in softer places, okay, it's great. Shake the hand to the body. You're gonna have to practice protecting your hands or you could get right out there, be faster than the guy, crack him a good one, bust your hand. Now you got a broken hand. Right, now you gotta fight with that, whatever that means. Okay? So think about that. If you're gonna practice this, practice, you know, turning it. You know, sometimes I tell my students, put a stick or a Joe in here so that you know that it's staying vertical the whole way. So if he ducks in here, I'm still hitting him like this, I'm not hitting him like that. Okay? So Think about your hands. Palm strikes are great. They're one of the best things that you can do as far as hitting people in the head. Um, if you just want to stun them too, slaps have more stunning power than a whole lot of punches. Hitting a lot of nerves and it can stun people more. When you learn how to slap like that, you have a lot of effect on somebody and it protects your hands. So think about this as you're training. What am I training for?